In Ogden Marsh, Iowa, a raging inferno consumes the town at night, leaving it deserted. The chaos began two days earlier during a high school baseball game. The crowd's joy turns to dread when Rory appears on the field, clutching a shotgun and appearing disoriented. Deputy Russell evacuates the field, while Sheriff David approaches Rory, initially assuming he's intoxicated. When Rory raises the shotgun, David reacts swiftly, fatally shooting him. In the evening, David meets with Rory's family, but Peggy, Rory's wife, disputes the sheriff's account, revealing that Rory had been sober for years. David's conscience weighs heavily on him, but his wife, Judy, reassures him. The next day, David receives a shocking call from the lab, revealing that Rory's blood tests, taken twice, showed no alcohol. Puzzled and troubled, David encounters the school principal, Ben, who resembles Rory in his vacant stare. In the hospital, Deirdre brings her husband, Bill, to see Dr. Judy. Bill dismisses his fatigue as trivial, appearing distant when questioned by Judy. Later, a noise in the garage prompts Deirdre to investigate, revealing a running tractor but no sign of Bill. Rushing to the house, she finds her son, and they hide in a wardrobe, fearing Bill, who possesses a knife. They fall silent as Bill ascends the stairs, but he eventually discovers them, locking them in. Ignoring their pleas, Bill douses the house in gasoline and ignites it. Tragically, by the time the authorities arrive, Deirdre and her son have perished. Bill, seemingly indifferent, awaits transfer at the police station, his gaze vacant. Meanwhile, hunters stumble upon a parachute and the lifeless body of an army pilot deep in the bog. The police investigate, and Russell recalls a rumored plane crash in the bog, initially considered unbelievable. David and Russell venture to the bog by boat and are stunned to find a submerged plane. Meanwhile, a drone camera hovers over the town, bearing the ominous words, Initiate Containment Protocol. With a growing theory, David traces the town's water source to the bog, its first stop being Rory's house. Suspecting water contamination from the plane crash, David defies orders and attempts to shut off the water supply, removing the valve to prevent reactivation. Upon returning to the station, they're shocked to discover Bill, injured and bleeding in his cell. Approaching Bill, they ponder his condition, but he awakens in a zombie-like state, launching an attack. David notes that Bill should have been retrieved already, yet attempts to contact higher authorities reveal dead phone lines and a lack of internet connectivity. David steps outside, discovering an entirely deserted town, save for a woman on a child's bike. A mysterious black car photographs him before speeding away when approaches. In the morgue, David examines a body with a stitched mouth and an eye, realizing it's alive. As he attempts to free the man, the medical examiner strikes him. The infected examiner wields a bone cutter, injuring David. In a struggle, David turns the cutter against the examiner, killing him. The cutter then menaces David, but Russell intervenes just in time. Returning home, David urges Judy to flee to her parents' house, but she insists on staying to serve as the town's doctor during the crisis. A mysterious figure outside alarms Judy, leading David to investigate the barn, where he's apprehended by the military. They force him onto a bus, where he discovers Judy and Russell among the kidnapped locals. The bus transports them to a makeshift military camp at the local school, enclosed by fences. They undergo scans for radioactivity and body temperature, with those who fail separated from their families, even children. Judy's high temperature leads to her separation, triggering David's resistance and subsequent incapacitation. Judy awakens, bound to a stretcher in a room filled with similarly restrained people, and she hears chaos outside. A car has collided with the camp's fences, prompting a desperate escape attempt. A chaotic riot unfolds as the soldiers attempt to contain the infected people. The containment area is breached, and the soldiers and doctors flee in helicopters, leaving patients bound to stretchers. David awakens in a truck and is transported to another camp, where they receive non-infected bracelets. However, David refuses to leave without Judy. A neighbor informs him that the town is sealed off, and roadblocks have been deadly for those attempting escape, but David labels him a coward. Returning to the police station, he discovers Bill's lifeless body and retrieves his gun. A noise prompts him and Russell to hide as a black car passes. David reveals Judy's pregnancy to Russell, who agrees to help rescue her. Meanwhile, Judy encounters her friend Becca on a stretcher.
Their conversation is disrupted by a strange noise, and a blood-covered Ben wielding a farming fork emerges from the shadows. Ben, visibly infected, goes on a merciless killing spree within the room, targeting patients with a farming fork. He approaches Becca, but Judy's scream distracts him. As Ben advances toward Judy, he's shot by David and Russell. The duo rescues Judy and Becca, stepping outside to discover the aftermath of a riot, a gruesome scene of destruction and flames. Amid the chaos, they spot a deranged individual attacking a car, but remain unnoticed. While searching for a functional vehicle, they hide behind a truck upon hearing noises. Hunters pursue and shoot people, loading their bodies onto a truck before departing. The group continues cautiously and arrives near Becca's boyfriend's house. Scotty, armed, greets them, apologizing and explaining his concerns. He reveals his mother is gathering supplies, but their conversation is disrupted by approaching figures. The group seeks refuge in a barn and watches as soldiers surround the house, seizing the elderly lady for testing. Ignoring David's warnings, Scotty rushes out to rescue his mother, only for soldiers to fatally shoot them both and set their bodies ablaze with a flamethrower. The soldiers receive orders to sweep the area, and one ventures into the barn. David and Russell swiftly capture him, taking him to the rear under threat. The young soldier pleads ignorance, revealing that their squadron received orders, but he didn't enlist to harm civilians. David reluctantly releases him, and he convinces his comrades that the area is empty. The following morning, the group reaches David's house. While Russell works on repairing a car, the others gather supplies. Judy pays a final visit to the nursery, unaware of an infected Peggy behind her. David hears a disturbance and rushes to the nursery, finding Judy bound to a chair. An infected Kurt attacks him, and as David tries to reach his fallen gun, Peggy stabs his hand, pinning it to the floor. She seizes the gun and points it at Judy, prompting David to remind her that he killed her husband to distract her. Peggy aims the gun at David, but he swiftly disarms her, freeing his hand to push Kurt away and fatally stabbing Peggy. Kurt seizes the gun and almost kills David, but Russell shoots him through the window, ending the threat. David releases Judy while Russell enters to ensure the infected are deceased, leaving Judy disturbed. She fears Russell might be infected, but David asserts they owe him their lives. The group departs in the car, but Becca starts coughing, leading to arguments among them. Spotting a helicopter overhead, they hide in a car wash. Inside, Becca notices someone outside, and the car is inadvertently set in motion. The vehicle gets trapped, and infected car wash employees surround them, shattering windows to reach inside. In a frantic struggle, David combats one of the infected, while another lunges for Becca. She resourcefully smashes his head against the car and kicks him off. After a strenuous battle, David manages to push the other attacker away, advancing the car. Suddenly, an employee appears at the car's rear, looping a hose around Becca's neck, dragging her out and ending her life. As David and Russell eliminate the assailants, Judy rushes to Becca, but it's too late. To compound their woes, a passing helicopter detonates their car. The surviving trio resumes their journey, discovering Russell's damaged truck. The mysterious black car approaches, prompting David to suggest theft, but Russell's aggressive actions cause a crash. An agent emerges, disclosing that the crashed plane transported a prototype biological weapon with a 48-hour incubation period. Furious, David demands the agent's assistance, but Russell, possibly infected, ends the agent's life. A tense standoff ensues as Russell points his gun at them, reminding them of his prior heroics. Russell seizes David and Judy, effectively taking them hostage as they walk. After discharging all the rifle's rounds into the air, David attempts to reason with Russell. When Russell lowers the gun, David strikes him and takes possession of the weapon. Gazing at the sky, Russell finally acknowledges his deteriorating condition and requests to accompany them for his remaining moments. Later, they encounter a military blockade on the highway. Russell volunteers to buy them time and receives the gun from David, charging toward the soldiers. He attempts to engage but is shot down by the soldiers, granting David and Judy an opportunity to sneak across the town's border. They ultimately reach a truck stop, discovering three loaded trucks meant for the evacuation of the healthy, all containing deceased occupants. Emptying bullet casing suggests a sinister government agenda. Fortunately, a standard truck remains available, 
prompting David to gather supplies for their escape. David stumbles upon an army radio overhearing a communication about an imminent major event in ten minutes. He heads to the garage, spotting the hunter's truck with corpses, indicating their presence. The building plunges into darkness. Judy, fearing an approaching threat, hides and arms herself with a knife. The hunters discovered her, leading to a tense pursuit through the building, filled with even more bodies. Judy blends among the corpses in a room, eluding the hunter's notice. As the hunter departs, Judy cautiously approaches the door, startled when touched, but relieved to find it's David. They flee to a truck, where an unexpected body falls out. The keys David took from the office don't work, requiring him to check the fallen body for another set. He locates them, but a hunter grabs his leg, leading to a struggle. Judy swiftly eliminates the second hunter as he attempts to enter the truck. In a heated struggle, David gains the upper hand over the hunter, dousing him with oil and igniting him with his lighter. Rolling away to avoid the flames, they escape in the truck with the military radio. Listening to a countdown, they witness a blinding explosion as the military obliterates their town. The blast wave propels their truck off the road, but they survive, holding hands as they survey the devastation. On their way to the nearest city, unaware of the drone camera tracking them, Initiate containment protocol flashes on screen. Meanwhile, national news reports attribute the town's destruction to an uncontrollable wind-driven fire and a chemical plant accident. A reporter on site is interrupted by an infected individual, leaving the truth concealed. 